said in previous interviews that your first memory that this could potentially be something that you do for a living was watching a movie being filmed in New York. When you look back at this journey and all the success that you've had, what would you tell that little girl now? Oh man, just wait, just wait because your life is gonna unfold in unexpected ways and things that you see now as a little girl will, and that you feel will definitely come true if you work really hard at it. That's the thing that I think I would tell my young self is that you know, continue with the work et ethic that your parents put into you. Mm -hmm. And um, it might not be immediate because it wasn't, uh, but wow, when you look back at it, it'll be so satisfying talked about the vulnerability that you need for a career in this industry. Has that gotten easier over time, just given all the success that you've had? <laughs> no. <laughs> and a short answer, no, because you do have to balance a little bit of vulnerability, right? Yeah. Um, I, I always like to say, um, you know, I don't want to show somebody anything. I want them to see something you know, and so that's different, that that creates a different vulnerability, even talking about it, right? Because when you allow somebody to see you versus showing them, it's it creates a different emotion, not only within the person that's doing it, but the person that's watching it. And so to your, to your point of vulnerability, I think that we have to put ourselves a little bit on the line every single time. And I feel like that also ties in with authenticity. It's very yeah. important in auditions to be authentic. I feel like sometimes I've gotten in a trap where I feel like I need to present or do, or this is what they're looking for when really they're just looking for, for something in this, you know, they're looking for something that they can connect with, with everyone's being. And, and that's an, that was an important lesson to learn in acting as well. So many powerful female characters throughout your career. Who were the women in your own life who shaped the, the storyteller that you are today? Oh, so many. I mean, I mean, it's not an exaggeration to say that I, I feel like we pull from everyone that is around us, you know, male, female, uh, you know, uh, across all spectrums. And so I feel like you you see somebody and, and you and you pull an emotion or you see somebody and, and you pull how to deal with it. Um, but yeah, there's been several um, females in my life that have come forward and, and strength and also um, continuity, I guess is the best word, you know, just showing up, being continuous with their support, being continuous with their understanding. Um, and being generous, you know, women in my life being very generous with their experience and, and their strengths and, and, and for me to anyone, me to be brave enough to put that into the work then. Mm, great answer. And, you know, one of the, the major themes of Team Wolf is finding your pack and that message about found family is driven home in the film as well. We're living in a time where years after a show comes to an end, there's information about how the cast didn't get along, and there were all these little tips on set, but that hasn't been true about Team Wolf, and you can sense that camaraderie both in front of and behind the camera. What do you think has played the biggest part in bringing this cast together and this found family that they've been able to establish over time? So I believe that starts with Tyler Posey, our number one, our captain, because talk about someone being genuine and authentic and being themselves every day, um, you know, I say that kid, but when we first started out, we're talking, you know, most of our cast was, you know, 18, yeah. early 20s, very young. And he took the responsibility head on. He was the first one on the set, last one to leave as far as the cast showed up with a great attitude every day. And to be honest, in the beginning, we were shooting 18, 20 hour days. We were shooting in Atlanta environment. Weather was a, was a, was an issue. It was cold. It was dark. We were out in woods, we were at, at lacrosse games, and he took it all in stride. And so when you have somebody that's leading a show like that, that sets the tone for everybody. You're not going to sit around and complain if, number one, you know, it, it's a trickle down thing, you know? Yeah. And he, I think through his spirit and his joy and his love of his character, that filtered down to all of us. And I feel mm -hmm. like we all want to be there. It's a tough show. You know, we we always used to joke when we were shooting the when we were shooting the television show, it was like we were shooting an independent movie every week. Yeah. I mean, it's a tough, it was a tough show. And you know, and it was the movie was equally um challenging, you know, and, and anybody that's on our set wants to be there. And I think that's a, a good a good yeah. thing to look to is that you know, we we all want to be together, we all want to be working yeah. together, and and that brings you together. Yeah, and it was something that Jeff Davis does so brilliantly with the series and the movie as well, is that each character has their own arc. Having played Melissa for six seasons and now a movie, did anything surprise you about her journey? 
I think just as an individual actor, it's what was surprising was to be able to come back to her, yeah. you know, and five years in real life and then 15 years in the future when we're talking about the movie itself and to be able to, uh, you know, encompass and embody that character again. What a gift, first off. And then what an experience, you know, when you're shooting a television show, you have time you know, that goes along and you, and you have an arc over six, six years, six seasons, however much you have. And so you, you have like the start and finish over six years and to have a break and then come back to it and then come back to it in a place where we're a little bit ahead. It was a very interesting experience as, as somebody, a, a performer on the show. And then it was just, I mean, it was great just to be back with everybody and talk and see, see what everybody else was bringing to the table by way of their experience. And, and it mm. was, um, I keep saying the word over and over again, but it was a real gift. This movie was a real gift to all of us. Yeah, perfect segue to this next question. But since the series wrapped, there's been speculation about it possibly being revived, possibly being gay, um, made into a movie. What was your initial reaction when you got the call from Jeff that this was possibly happening? And then what was it like getting to step back into Melissa's shoes? So it was really euphoric to get the call from Jeff because he said, hey, we're in talks. It's not finalized yet. Can you keep a secret? Would you, would you come back? You know, and they had to make some, you know, and, and I'm sure that a lot of people got that call and, you know, through Jeff and the writers, they had to go through a hundred episodes and find out who could come back and why and what the story mm -hmm. was going to be. And so um, it, that was just truly amazing to first get the news. Uh, that we all wanted, you know, we've all wanted to come back in some shape yeah. or form, you know, we thought, you know, we would have, we would have been overjoyed to get a seventh season out of, uh, you know, Teen Wolf at the time, the the television show. And so to have a movie, to have it in a different medium, to be able to yeah. come back with a little bit of time, it felt right. It felt good. It felt on time. And uh, yeah, so it was just a joy. You know, while you're playing the same character, there is that 15 year jump and you're also changing mediums from television to film. Did that did you feel that change on set while you were filming and how did the experiences differ? So what differed really, and, and I think um, some people will understand this, is that, sure, I've changed over five years, but who has really changed over five years are the younger cast because yeah. that five years is, you know, we're talking, you know, late twenties into early thirties. And that is a significant time frame in anybody's life, you know? So it was very interesting to meet them where they are now, and then to perform with them where they are now, and also to perform 15 years in the future on the show. So, you know, the, the mother and son relationship here on the television show has now grown and blossomed into this other beautiful supportive relationship over here yeah. on, on the movie and that was something wonderful to see not that the torch is passed I don't want to say that because I'm the kind of person I have always relied on my parents for experience strength guidance hope all those things and I feel like Tyler and I were able to do this with with the new relationship that you're seeing in the movie Jeff also found a way to really incorporate everything that we love about Team Wolf into this movie while bringing some new dynamics in there. Yeah. Something that stayed consistent, like you were just saying, is Mama McCall's relationship with Scott. I love how he found a way for them to share this kind of private moment in the film. What was it like getting to re-explore this relationship in a new capacity and to work with Tyler five years later? Well, it was really wonderful. You know, I think I think I can say that I trust that Jeff is going to put heart into our scripts and, and our yeah. dialogue. He, he uh, often pulls from conversations that he's had with his own mother, or, you know, he's a twin himself, you know, conversations yeah. that he's had with his brother. And so I, I was hoping and, um, you know, wanting to have, everybody wants to have that one little moment for themselves yeah. in the film. And I believe that Tyler and I had that in that one particular scene that you're talking about. Yeah. So I was grateful that we were able to do that. And also, even in that dialogue, I feel it was, it was more, um, I don't want to say peers talking, but you know, they set, they set us up as a, a young mom, yeah. young son in the beginning. Yeah. And so that's something that's really beautiful, I feel, in this relationship as well. When you have a child young, when you're a younger parent, you're lucky because you will have an adulthood with your child as well. And that relationship is long and hopefully lustrous. And I feel yeah. like we're able to capture that a little bit with with this movie and and so even the dialogue even that moment between us felt um a lot more mature and and, and mm -hmm. from a different relationship space and and again it was just really really wonderful to experience
And Jeff has put Melissa through the ringer throughout this series. Yes. As an actress, how do you create this space for yourself to dive into those more emotional moments and scenes? Ooh, that's a really great question. Everybody has a different um, way of processing uh, emotional scenes. And for me, uh, I think I, it, it's a strange thing, but I think of other people's pain, mm. other people's pain that I'm, I love and I, and I have experienced because you hope that with your own pain or your own trauma, you have come to some understanding or reasoning or processing. And so it kind of is kind of over here, but you know, somebody else's pain that you, you have to hold in your hand and, and really be with. And so that that's where I come from. And, um, and that's what I've been able to put into the work. If that answers your question. Definitely. Yeah, for sure. And, you know, the beautiful thing about the uh, art is the ability to connect with audiences, which this franchise has undoubtedly done. And I know that you've shared that fans have shared kind of moments about how the show has impacted their own lives and social media and at conventions that you've done. How being part of this project changed the way that you look at future projects? Only in the way that I know that Teen Wolf quite possibly is lightning in a bottle. And the fandom that we have and, and the friends that we have of the show is something that I hold in the highest regard because I know that not every show has this much love and support and, and continuous love and support even when we're not on the air. So uh, it has taught me to be more grateful and more present in the moment and to understand that I think no matter wherever I travel in the world for the rest of my life, I will always somehow come in contact with somebody that has either seen the show or has been really impacted yeah. by the show and and that again the word such a gift yeah. and if you told if I if I was sitting here with little five-year-old Melissa I wouldn't have even been able to articulate that to her because I didn't even know that that was a possibility of a thing and so yeah. that to me is one of the most special things that Teen Wolf has ever given to my life is um the reach and, and the connection worldwide with people that have been impacted by what we all, hundreds of people have created. Great answer. And you know, without giving any spoilers in true Jeff Davis fashion, the film ends pretty open-ended and there is a possibility for maybe a revival or maybe another film. Have there been any early conversations about that? You know, I think it, it was it was a dream come true to have one. It would be a double scoop ice cream sundae if we had two or more. You know, that's going to depend really on our fandom. You know, we, we're on Paramount Plus now. Yeah. Uh, we we're streaming worldwide on the on January 26th, and we're hoping that everybody tunes in. And if if everybody tunes in and likes what we've done, we we would we would be honored to do more. We would be honored. And then if, if this is the last, hopefully not, that we see of Melissa McCall, what has she taught you and would you share any parting words with her? Oh, she's whole, someone asked me this on, on Twitter the other day, you know, if there was one word to describe um, Melissa McCall, what would it be? And I feel like that word would be wholehearted, mm -hmm. but also I think the word would be steadfast. That's one of the things that Jeff and I talked about with this character, because there was one time where yeah, uh, in a particular scene, I thought that I could maybe come a little bit harder at 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 Tyler at the Scott Scott um, character Scott for something that he had done, and he's like, "Nope, you are unconditional love. You are one hundred percent support. You you know." So for me, what what I um, take away from her are those two things, and also just being a consistent presence in someone's life, being an anchor. Yeah. being somebody that they can always count on. And I feel like her character has been always somebody, not only with her son, but in her, you know, in her wider circle, somebody that could be counted on. Yeah, love that. I love that quote about being your own anchor too. And, you know, outside, you. Uh, outside of Team Wolf, season two of Bridgewater is now yes. airing. For fans who may not be familiar with the podcast, can you tell us a little bit about it and what is it like working in, in this medium as well? Well, um, it was my first uh, shot at this medium type type of podcast narrative, and it was really wonderful. We started um, actually working during the pandemic, and so we would all do our scenes over Zoom, but we were all in different strange locations. Like, 
I was doing mine in um, my guest room and Misha was in somebody's closet and, you know, somebody might have had a VO booth. And so that was really interesting to see all the different environments that we were in. And we were thrilled to be asked back for a second season. And yeah, it's, it's streaming now. It's up uh, for listening. And, um, you know, Bridgewater is a sci-fi story that tells um, about uh, mysterious happenings at the Bridgewater Triangle, which is an actual real place. And it's, it's fascinating. It's fascinating how they've made that story. Yeah, I got one final question for you. You're such a dynamic storyteller and you've done so much already in your career. What's left on your bucket list? Oh, honey, I'm allergic to responsibility. So uh, <laughs> that's what I like to say. I'm really happy being an actor and telling the stories that are presented to me that I'm lucky enough to be a part of. And so I hope I'm, I'm able to continue to do that forever. And, I, you know, I never miss an estate sale. So that's something that I do uh, personally. You know, I love vintage uh, jewelry, purses, clothing, mid-century barware. So if I'm not acting, I'm, I'm, I'm buying all your old stuff. That, that's basically where I live, between those two worlds.